All right, Bobby, welcome to the new year, new TBR list. So in today's episode, we are going to review all of our most anticipated reads, well, our top three most anticipated reads of 2024 and what we're looking forward to the most. Um, And just like our last episode, this is going to be an SJM free zone. Everybody knows what they're hyped for in that universe. Um, Everybody knows what we're waiting on pins and needles for. Um, So there's just really no reason to talk about it. Also, if you're on the internet, be very, very careful. More than the first three chapters of House of Flame and Shadow from Crescent City has leaked to the internet. So be very wary of any Crescent City or House of Flame and Shadow content because... Uh, I think it was uh, somewhere in Brazil leaked a lot of the book. So I've actually been avoiding the internet like a plague because I don't want spoilers. I'm a no spoiler girl. Good to know. Yeah. So jot that down. (laughs) All righty. So these are going to be our top six most anticipated reads of 2024. Um, do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? Do you want to volley back and forth and do one and one? Let's volley back and forth. Change it up. Okay. Switch it up. Um, all right. We so make our my... own rules. We <laughs> this make our is own basically... rules here. <laughs> <laughs> there are no rules. It's like Mad Max. There's no rules. No rules. <laughs> Okay, so my first on my list is going to be the Sin of Saints series by Lauren M. Leisure. Um, If you watched our last episode, you know that this is one of Bobby's favorite books from 2023. So she sold me on it. So if you haven't seen that episode, go check it out. And she's going to sell you on it, too. (laughs) Yeah, I really love and appreciate this series from Lauren M. Leisure very excited too because we're really focusing on our author interviews for this season um and she's on our author interview list so be sure to if you are aware of her work make sure you get it read because we're gonna have her on the podcast oh i can't hear you what's first i didn't hear that sentence you hear me now I don't know why it did that. I think it might be partially, maybe not even your microphone, but internet. That could be. Um, I'm sitting pretty close to the router. I wonder if that's causing issues. I don't know why, but maybe. I don't know. I, I had a tech. I had a guy for, I don't know, there's some Wi Fi device. And I was like, hey, man, it's not connecting to the Wi Fi. And he's like, it's probably too close to your router because too close is a problem. And I was like, if you say so, tech guy on the phone, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never understand. Did you get all of that? I all did. That? That, all that was I fine. Know. That was fine. Okay. I just don't move my head. If there's one thing about me. It's that I sit very still. <laughs> <laughs> False. <laughs> <laughs> And what's on your, what's number one on your list, Bobby? <laughs> oh, what are you, Bobby's so excited, she cannot speak. She hath no words. <laughs> I thought you were going to keep going with the Sin of Saints. I'm so sorry. I'm just waiting patiently. <laughs> no, I mean, I really didn't have anything else to say about it. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> okay. You know, okay, I guess I do have one more thing to say. Um, what really sold me was, one, you talking about it, but two, the cover art. I love blues and purples and cool colors. And, uh, yeah, I would say the cover art. You're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but what a fucking beaut. They're really pretty. Yeah. All right, that's that's pretty much all I got on those. (laughs) So this is actually a book that has been on my TBR for a long time, and I'm at, like, 2%. It's in my Kindle I've been at 2%. Um, it's book one of the Dracula duet by Karina Hale called Blood Orange. I am a very big 
a vampire story reader. Like, I like vampires a lot. So this is, like, speaking to me. Karina Hale wrote the Underworld God series as well. So River of Shadows, which I've talked about before on this podcast, is extremely well done. We have a Finnish folklore podcast all about the inspiration for some of the deities in her Underworld God series. So I'm really, and I really liked it. So I'm excited to read Blood Orange. When I finally was like, oh, this is a vampire. Like I need to read, I need to bump this up. It's kind of funny though, because Karina Hale, three of her books this year are on my 2024 TBR. This just happens to be top of the list. <laughs> I don't know how to wrap these up either. <laughs> um, okay. Next on my list is God Killer by Hannah Kaner. Hannah Kaner. Thanks, Hannah. Um, God Killer by Hannah K. Okay. Um, and if I'm being honest, uh, I don't really know anything about it. I just like the name. Yeah, it is. I read this over Christmas, and I can tell you that. It is very, very good. What drew me into it... No. But it is the beginning of a series. But the second book is on its way out. Like, very soon, I think. What got me for this book is the cover. The cover of this book is so beautiful. And the cover for the next book is also beautiful. But... I don't know. I'll insert a picture here. It is a very good story. I actually ended up purchasing it for somebody for as a Christmas gift because I loved it so much like three days after I, I finished reading it. So I think it's a great <laughs> addition to your 2024 TBR. Agreed. What's up next for you? Okay. So next for me. Hold on. Let me grab them. They're behind me. Ooh. Ooh. Hard copies. What was that? Ooh. Hard copies. Yes. So. In real life books. IRL. Yeah. I am missing one. Are you seeing that correctly? In yeah. I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I am missing one. This is the Four Horsemen series by Lauren Thalassa. Lauren Thalassa. The Four Horsemen series by Lauren Thalassa. So I have Pestilence. Look, oh my god, look at these covers. So Pestilence. Ooh. War. All right, I'm in. Famine. And I do not have Death. Death is the fourth book and the one I'm missing. So I was at the store shopping for Christmas presents <laughs> and I saw these. <laughs> no, I actually didn't. I was a good, good, good about it. I saw all four of them stacked on the shelf. I was like, what are those? I've never heard of those. So I grabbed the top book and I look at it. I was like, oh, four horsemen. Ooh. And then I read the back and the top part says they came to earth. Pestilence, war, famine, death, four horsemen riding their screaming steeds, racing to the corners of the world, four horsemen with the power to destroy all of humanity. They came to the earth and they came to end us all. So I will be reading these this year. Um, these were actually originally self-published in 2018 by Lauren, but they are now picked up by a publisher and that publisher is Bloom Books. Uh, so I am very excited to read them. The, the story sounds pretty riveting, like like the synopsis on the back of the first one. And I just love the dark. I'm a big, like, dark enemies to lovers type thing. So very, very excited for this one because this one... Um, like one of the tropes in this one based on the back is um like prisoner like a woman who tries to fight against is taken prisoner and then 
I'm guessing, annoys the shit out of pestilence. So I'm very <laughs> excited to read that. That is Loki why I like those types of books because I'm like, yeah, girl, get under his skin, tear him up. Um, I know that you are not a huge supernatural fan, but I am. <laughs> and they do a they do a story arc about the four horsemen. Um I mean if you know anything about supernatural, it's not much of a spoiler, but they kill all four horsemen. Um that's what they do. They travel around and they kill things. But Death becomes a beloved character oh. in the Supernatural fandom. Interesting. You know, the more you talk about Supernatural, <laughs> the more I'm having to consider actually watching it, which is bullshit. <laughs> Don't. It's way more fun to allow me to retell it. It's so rare to find somebody that doesn't watch it. So for me to be able to talk about it, talk at someone <laughs> about it... <laughs> All right, you probably just saved me eons and eons of hours of my life that I will never get back, so I will watch it. I'll just keep sending you the little snippets that I think are so goddamn funny. I love it. Let's do it. <laughs> what is your third uh, book? Third, and hopefully not final book of 2024, um, is Carnage. This is the last latest. I hope it's not the last. It might be the last. It's the the Lords series. I don't know how to review them. They're all or or like it's like a series. It's like a group of standalone novels in the same universe. I don't know what you call that. Yeah, so they're just a fa I call them like families of books. So like they're all standalone, but they're like might be small interconnected. Like they reference a character from a, the story that was published first. So like. If you are a fan, if you're not a dark romance reader, based on the, the title I'm going for, this is dark romance, <laughs> but the darkest, yes. If you're more of a rom-com girl and you read like Allie Hazelwood's uh, STEM series, like Love Hypothesis and, and stuff like that, those are technically four standalone books too, but in like the third one that came out, it references both the like some characters in the second and the first book. So you get these little nods back to the to characters um, that are kind of like in the world. Yep, just like that. So I guess the family, I don't know, the Lord's universe. Which I guess some people might get confused with like the Bible, but um, it's not. <laughs> also based on the I mean the title could go either way never mind <laughs> moving on <laughs> but anyways in the lord's universe <laughs> I can't say it like that anymore <laughs> you know if you know you know okay it's carnage that's what it is and I'm super excited to read it it came out like October of last year it kept gotten pushed back but if I didn't have adult things to do today that's what I'd be doing right now instead I'm on an airplane this week. I'm gonna I'm gonna read at the airport. Yeah, that's if nobody's looking over my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you turn your screen off on your Kindle when you set it down. Don't set it down with the cover <laughs> open. I know, and it's weeks like this when I have to go like to work and be around those people um, that I've practiced changing the background on the Kindle away from. The, the cover of the book to something else to just like random kindle art <laughs> <laughs> if you hold it down long enough you'll get the restart page and it says screen off and it turns it white oh that's cool too yeah so like for example i'm just gonna, laying it upside down yeah that's i tend to do that too so i'm gonna just keep like holding down the yeah see uh, and then it says screen off. You do screen off and it's just white. Battery too? Does it say I battery? Mean, it's got a great battery life. Yeah, I assume so. It's got a great battery life anyways, so it's not a huge deal. I'm just curious. Yeah. Cool. Great. That's actually the perfect tip going into my week. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Are you allowed to alley you on yourself like that? <laughs> Uh, hell yeah, that was great. <laughs> so, my third and not final, there's a lot of reads I'm anticipating this year. 
But the one I want to share with you guys is actually the a fourth book in a series because this is me telling you to go read this series. Technically, you should read a different series first. You should read the Glass and Steel <laughs> series. But Amen. I am Amen. so excited to read the Dead Letter Delivery by C.J. Archer. It is the fourth installment in the Glass and Library series. It is out on March 5th. And I'm so excited. I pre-ordered it on Kindle Paperwhite, but it also, uh, C.J. Archer were has a lot of her content actually available on Hoopla. So uh, her last book that just came out, Murder at the Polo Club, different series. Um, I read that on Hoopla ebook. And then she has an the, another book in that same series. It's the Cleopatra Fox series coming out. It's another murder mystery. Super excited for that one, too. I'm just always highly anticipating the releases from CJ Archer. And she typically churns out, like, two books a year, you guys. Like, if you want an author who performs and puts out content, she typically puts out a book a year. Normally, like, two. Them being from different series, though. So, and I will tell you that she has a lot of series... And though they might have similar themes, they are so very different in the characters and how she writes the characters and creates their personalities. She is a phenomenal character writer. Phenomenal. So highly recommend you check out anything by CJ Archer. Just know that her next release is in the series that I'm continuing, both The Glass Library and Cleopatra Fox. I am highly anticipating for this year. Amen. I can attest. Um... Bobby made me a CJ Archer believer. Yeah. So up on the Glass and Steel series. It's so fun. Oh, God, it's so fun. It's very fun. It's YA friendly as well. A lot of her stuff is there's only about one, two, two series that are really explicit. The yeah, assassin. Very friendly. Sorry. I was just going to say they're very friendly and a little shock and awe going from dark romance to C.J. Archer to dark romance. They're an excellent, fun <laughs> palette cleanser for sure when you're getting like either you're deep in some world building or you're like dark and in the trenches. Like they're a very good place to pull you out and bring you some joy and some like, I don't know, just some good, fun story. Her two explicit series are the Assassin's Guild series, which I would recommend to read first if you're interested. And then also, oh no, I said that wrong. Read Assassin's Guild after Lord Huxbury's Players. So Lord Huxbury's Players is three books. Um, set in like the 1400s, very good. Assassin's Guild set after, also good. I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so it just ended there. I don't know exactly where she was going with it, but I'm pretty sure it was going to end with get you some CJ Archer in your life. Yeah. Get some CJ Archer on your Kindle, on your TBR. Check out Hoopla. Well worth it. Get your library card. Get your library card. Get Hoopla and get CJ Archer for free. Her yes. audiobooks are very well done too, by the way. They have accents and everything. They're so good. Unless you're Kristen. Yeah. I don't like audio books. <laughs> and it's not, they don't do anything. I just can't focus. <laughs> I just can't focus. We know. It's okay. We love you. <laughs> we accept you here. It's okay. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. We'll be back next week with an episode on poor things. It was supposed to be this week, but we had to pivot a little bit because of the snowstorm that has snowed me into my house. So... Check out which makes Bobby a poor thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Glad I went to the grocery store. That's all. So be sure to check out next week's episode. We will be covering the poor things adaptation from a book to a movie. Uh, there's lots of thoughts about it already, even just the book by itself. So if you're just as curious as we were, come share your thoughts in that comment section. And until then, keep reading. <laughs>